Today, it is in this episode of Open at Microsoft, we continue to talk with Jerry about API Builder. You don't want to miss that. Hey, Jerry. So in a previous episode, we spoke about DAB and uh, the API Builder, DAB. I'm already a friend of the project. <laughs> and you show us like how it was super cool to use on the local and the container when the database and everything. But you also mentioned it was possible to use in Azure. And since I am an Azure guy. I want to know more. Tell us. OK. So uh, remember, everything inside DAB is really a container. And so running it in your local environment is super easy, right? I just execute that container. I could run it in a container service. I could put it in Kubernetes if I want to. But the easiest way to get started, without a doubt, is using static web apps. And so static web apps, well, it's pretty awesome. So let me let me just remind you that. What we're trying to do is replace the API layer in a normal application. But where you put that API, uh, API layer is really up to you. And we're saying that why not put it in static web apps, probably the easiest place inside Azure, right? And so if you know anything about static web apps, you know already that you don't interact with them directly. You still see them in the portal. But when it comes to files, everything is inside some sort of Git repository that you have. And so you can upload. Um, you know, your HTML files, your images, anything you might have that you want to put there. And as soon as you uh, commit that into your main branch, all of a sudden it gets pushed up automatically by one of the GitHub actions into static web apps. How does all that get set up? That's kind of the beautiful part of it. You go into static web apps and say, this is my uh, Git repository and you authenticate to it. It goes ahead and adds the actions for you. It goes ahead and sets everything up and, and and handles all the token permissions for you between the two. From that point forward, all you need to do is commit all of your changes and let those actions kick in and move everything up. But what do you need to do in order to create a DAB instance? Well, it's the same as if you were doing it locally. So let me just start by bringing down my repository and showing you what it looks like. So right here, I have um, every file that's inside my, um, inside my repository. The first one here at the bottom is index.html. That's just required. You can't have no content is really the idea for a static web app. So we give them that. Mine just says, hello world, nothing else. The next is the, um, this is a folder, right? Swab, the static web app, DB connections. And if I go into that, I have a single file. And here it is. It's my config file, the exact config file, by the way, that I had on my local machine up here with one line changed. And the only line that's changed is the one you would hope would change. And it's the connection string so that I don't have to include all my credentials inside my connect inside my file here. I just point to whatever the environment variable is. By default, static web apps puts it in my connection string, really cute like that. And so there it is. Everything else below that is exactly the same, no change at all. So as soon as I put this in, the actions kick in. So let me go back to everything that's in my repository again, because there was a third one. The third one is the workflows folder. This is the YAML file that defines and implements the actions that are going to happen. I did not create this file. Static Web Apps created it for me as soon as I made that relationship between my Git repository and Static Web Apps. So now every time I make any change to my uh, config file, Static Web Apps reflects it immediately. So let me tell you how it works. So let's just say you have nothing, and you, now you have a static web app. That static web app does its first pull of this config file behind the scenes for you. It creates an instance of the container, gives it an endpoint that you can use, done. Everything that you would have done as a local developer by saying dab start, it is basically running dab start for you, not in a static environment, but in a containerized environment for you. And every, all the, the extra pieces are sort of hidden from you. And it might make sense for me to show the settings inside. So let me go into my portal for a second and show you. So um, here is a normal static web app. And so this is obviously it's called Dab Demo Static Web App. I created this, made the connection to my Git repository and nothing else. And so everything else is sort of just basic. What's new is down here, this preview uh, tab that's added that says database connections. When I go into database connections, I have a single database connection defined. And if I look at the details of it, it's basically pointing to my demo database, my demo SQL server, with the all the um, variables that I need to make my connection string work, basically. 
So my okay. username, my password, the database name, the catalog name. Great. Yeah. Uh, this is basically what sw what static web apps will inject into the environment variable for me. The end. I, get, I don't want to oversell it as too simple, <laughs> but it is crazy that you only need this one file. If I upload this one file into a static web app, it already knows what that file is supposed to do. So it already knows that it can create a container from that, uh, a, a DAB container from that and exposure endpoints. And so now, I, I don't know if you saw what the URL was, it's kind of fun how they give you these, um, these uh, you know, constructed endpoints for you. So this one is white dash pond dash and then a, a serialized value. Yeah. And, uh, but nonetheless, it goes the same. Must be unique, right? So it's good. It, it, it's got to be unique. That's right. So that's why they have it easy to read, but then they have this serialized value at the end. And uh, the only difference is, and I'll just show this real quick, is the when I go to the URL, I have to include data-api slash API. That's because if you want to have a static um, application in your static web app, you still can. We, we're not going to interfere with that. You can still do everything that you would expect to do, a simple website or maybe a, uh, a, a WebAssembly Blazor application, whatever it is you want in a static web app. Intercept. This doesn't disqualify that. You can still do it. This just adds to its capability, and now you have an endpoint as well. It's weird to say this, but with a static web app, you almost have end-to-end -end everything that you need for a, a straightforward application, uh, cool. you know, both the website and the API. And then you just add a database to it, your MySQL database, your Postgres database, Cosmos database, or for me, it was SQL Server database. So I just want to ask you a question to make sure I understand. Mm -hmm. I am a big fan of Static Web App. I use that for many of my personal projects and stuff like that. So usually in Static Web App, you have a part that is the, the app, whatever is the language. Yeah. And optionally, you could use the API. Sometimes, like Often is like an Azure function that people will put there. And now you're saying that instead of like writing code to build that API, put that config file and it will take the place of that API and I can have my, my app. So let me, let's me let be super clear about this part. So you're, <laughs> you're talking about the function feature of you know, interaction, integration with functions. That's still there in a different feature of static web apps. So this is in addition to what static web apps can do with functions. It can also do this with a data API builder endpoint as well. You could do both, but it probably makes most sense for you to pick one or the other. But if it makes sense for you to use them all, it's okay. Oh, wow. That's pretty cool. I really need to try that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and just, just to kind of uh, take it back to what we were talking about, this is open source, right? And so if you wanted to get started today, AKMS slash DAB slash docs will take you to the documentation. AKMS slash DAB slash repo will take you to the repo. And we're serious about it being an open source project. We welcome all the interaction from, and honestly, a lot of the roadmap we have today is from the interaction that we've had with our community so far. So if you're a developer watching this now and you want to be part of the direction that DAB is really taking, we welcome you for sure. And honestly, Frank, thanks for giving me this opportunity just to invite as many developers as that want to come. Yeah, wonderful. So, like, I'm assuming the repo is on GitHub, right? We saw, like, a, so, like, we could go there. There's, like, we can contribute. There's issue and documentation and everything there. That's yeah, one hundred percent. In fact, let me let me pull it up real quick so that we can look at it together. I, and uh, it all of the by the all the RFCs for the features that are coming in the next few months. Those are all in under issues as well. And so, yeah, it's uh, GitHub.com/slash/Azure/slash/DataAPIBuilder. And it's wonderful. Different. Yeah. Great. Okay. <laughs> we see the single sign on. Yep. That's <laughs> what you, when you have like a repo under Microsoft, there's a little bit more security when you are a Microsoft employee. It's normal. Right. I have that. I have those two. Excellent. That's right. Well, you'd be able to see it from outside as well, though. That's the nice part. Yeah. Thank you all. Thank you very much, Jerry, for showing us all that wonderfulness. I don't know if it's a word, but I make it a word uh, about <laughs> that. It's really great. And you know what? I think I'm, I need to go now. I need to deploy that static web app using this. Thank you. Yeah, you do, Frank, because it's amazing. And anyway, what? It'll take you five minutes and then all of a sudden your data is available as an API. And, great. Uh, it's a great story. Thanks, Frank. <laughs>